Well, today I finally decided to pile up all of my cement covered trowels, everything that had tile mortar on it, all of these guys here, all of my tools. This is like, I guess the past six months or so, uh, tools that we forgot to clean at the end of the day. And rather than going buying all new ones, we want to use this product that uh, Sal de Blasi told us about and to see if it'll clean it off of all of this. And not only that, most importantly of all, you can see here, I got it here on my Ryobi mixer too. See that? I forgot to, normally I wash this off as soon as I mix the, the mortar. But this last time we forgot, it happens. So anyway, we're going to try that out today and we'll see if that works. So you can see all of the stuff we have in here. We've got my uh, torpedo levels, both of them. I've got my other one here. So we're going to try this solution out here that Sal de Blasi told us about last year. Now, if you haven't been to Sal's channel, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. He's great. He's a, a tiler up in Boston. That's my hometown. And he, he puts out a lot of good videos on tiling. But anyway, he told us about this stuff here. He told us about using this sulfamic acid here. And so one of these little tubs here should treat about a gallon of water. But basically it's a white powder. You mix it in, you, you wear gloves when you're doing it. You mix it in and you leave it in for a few hours. And it's supposed to dissolve all of this off of here. Now, typically the sulfamic acid, which I'll put a link to down in the description for Amazon, this stuff is normally meant for removing grout haze and, and uh, residue and, and other mortar and stuff off of tile, like a, a finished tile wall. But it should certainly work on these tools here as well. So we're going to give that a shot. Let's try it out. Okay, you have to be careful here because the instructions tell you to use eyewear and gloves and also they tell you don't mix this in a metal bucket they want you to use a plastic bucket not a metal bucket so i'm also curious as to how it's going to perform here on my metal tools it tells you to avoid like the metal fittings on the on the tubs and showers so it's probably more for the delicate type stuff rather than your your rugged tools here like we're using here with our trowels this way we don't have to buy any new trowels okay so what i've done here now is I have all my tools right here piled up, ready to go. And I'm gonna see if I can squeak two gallons out of this bucket here. I'm gonna mix up a gallon of water with it, with half of it. And then I'm going to mix up another gallon with the other half. And we'll see if two gallons is enough to submerge all of my tools here to the depth that's needed. I'll just stir it up a little bit there. to take this and dump it in there. You can hear it sort of sizzling. It's doing its effervescence there. Okay, so now we'll mix up another batch. Okay, so now we're ready to mix up our second batch of sulfamic acid here. I'll pour some more in here and get it stirred up. You can hear it sizzling in there. When I'm done with this and I dump the rest in, I'll, I'll bring the camera up close so you can see what it's doing. It sounds like it's like it's like when you pour a sprite over ice. Okay, so now I'm using the mic on the front of the camera and I'll get in close and you can see if you can hear it. A little bit of a sizzle. Okay, 
case and I will pour the other gallon in. I just want to make sure that the business end of all of my tools are submerged. By the way, did you see what it did to the wood there, my wood stirrer? It turned the ends yellow where I used it to stir and it got into the water. I guess that's why they want you to wear gloves. Another thing you can do anytime you're walking by is just give it a few kicks. Agitate it a little bit. If there's any powder that's settled anywhere, it might kick it up off the bottom a little bit and let it mix some more. Just give it a little agitation there. Okay, so it has now been approximately uh, about eight hours or so. We put this in at about three o'clock in the afternoon and it's 11 o'clock at night now. And so I wanted to take a look and see. First, first of all that you can see here, see how it kind of darkened the metal a little bit? So I guess that's why they say don't use it near the metal fixtures. So your metal tools will be clean, but they'll be different color. So most of it looks like it scrapes off pretty easily, see? If you keep it under the solution there, uh, this might need a little bit longer, but a lot of the stuff pretty well cleaned itself off. See, like this one here. So a lot of it's coming off and then you, you, know, you scrape through the thick stuff and put it back in and I'm willing to bet another half hour this will be all dissolved up. What I want to see here is how did the bullet fare. Remember my, my little bullet level here? That just comes right off. What I want to see is how it does with my, uh, if I use a brush on it. Yeah, it helps a little on the small ones, but any of the holes that have a, any of these little mounds that have any kind of substance to them, you're better off just scraping them with the, see it comes right off with the taping knife there. A little scraper, but a knife. So this guy did pretty well. He came off nice and clean. And it really is important to get all of these off, these little boogers here, especially on the side where you're laying it flat and taking your measurements. You really do want to make sure that this here is all completely flattened off. Let him soak a little bit more. I'm going to see what these others look like. So this was already a little bit rusty around the edges anyway, but man, you can see this is coming off like butter. So what I'll do with these is I'll transfer some of these that are really clean into my other pan that I have like this. And I'll just fill it up with water and rinse them out really good and let them dry. But these are, these are ready to use now and I was ready to throw half of these out. All right, so what was good about this was if it took only a few hours, like I think Sal left his in overnight when he did it. It took overnight for his to, to work. I think maybe even a couple of days. I can't remember. But anyway, we'll put that one in there. Um, so if it only takes a few hours like this, then I can put another batch in now of other tools that I have that need this treatment. And when I wake up in the morning, they'll be ready. So like this one, I wasn't able to get him submerged in. So now when I pull some of these other ones out, I can submerge him all the way down in underneath. See, a lot of it just comes right off. He might need some more on this end here, see that? So we'll, we'll leave him in the bath. We'll take the spirit level out, my little bullet. And I want to see how the other bullet did. Because I did have another one in here. Where is he at? I'll find him in a minute. And this is a grout float. But I had some grout that was stuck on there, and that just comes right off. Wash him right off there. Still want to make sure you get this completely flat. 
So this guy had quite a bit of gook on it when we first started. And look, it's just coming right off nicely here. Let's see what the brush does over here. It'll get inside some of those nooks and crannies there, but look, the rail was nice and clean on here. Okay, put him in there. This guy, I'm gonna leave, put him back in to sit overnight so that we can get the handle done. Oh, this is silicone. This has like silicone on it. This ain't coming off. I think this tool is toast. He's gonna have to go in the circular file. I didn't even notice that when I put him in there. I have to leave him in there a few more hours to get all this to scratch off. This one was really on thick, as you can see on both sides of it. So what you do is you, you break it down a little bit, you wear some of it down, and you throw them back in. I'm gonna put try to submerge the whole thing. So this is the one that's really important to me, this half inch, because I need to use this in a couple of days. So I really need to get this guy. He might have to just keep soaking. Yeah, he's got a lot more to go. But we can try to break off some of the bigger chunks and then let him soak again. Well, so here we are the next morning. These are the tools that I rinsed off last night. And I mean, look how perfect these came out. So here's my uh, magnetic bullet level there, torpedo level. And here is the red plastic one. And they both, I was able to get all traces of the mortar off of there. And the same thing here with this uh, grout float here, you can see here, he's perfectly cleaned off there. Uh, just so, you know, anywhere where there's a little bit of metal that seemed to have gotten affected by it. And here's my Ruby quarter inch uh, square notch trowel here. So Ruby's even, uh, he's got a little bit of rust around the edges, but I mean, look at this, everything completely cleaned off. I can keep using this now. This is like it's a brand new trowel. And so now turning our attention over here, um, this is the the tub that you remember about eight hours ago at midnight, uh, 11 o'clock or so, uh, we were looking and seeing who needed additional soaking time and this was a new one that I added and it looks like pretty much on its own most of the stuff that was caked to the top of this trowel here just disappeared. So it sort of did its work for me and it shows that the bath was able to be used um, continuously in two gallons per container of powder mix, which was good. All right, so I think what we'll do with this guy then is take him out. Let me just make sure. Yeah, this stuff just comes right off. So he's ready to go and get rinsed. Now you see this kind of rusty kind of goo here. I think that's that area didn't get so much coverage. I'm not so concerned about that one right now because I do have other tools that need to get out of here and cleaned off and ready to use tomorrow. Uh, so this one here, look at that. I can even get it to come off the handle pretty easily too. And you can see coming off the blade Now this one here, I only submerged last night at this point. So I think I might leave him in a little bit more today and get some of these other ones out. Yeah, see all of these, I had real thick coverage on the handles. I gotta leave those in. Let's see how this guy does. This was my other half inch. Yeah, so that additional eight hours really added quite a bit of disintegration there. So I think I might leave this one in 
uh, for the rest of the day. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, so look at this ground float here. See? It just comes off real easily now. I mean, last night I couldn't even make that budge before I dropped it into the solution. So look. It just really does a job on it. Gets through it nice. So this grout float is savable now. So by doing all of this, I probably just saved myself close to $200, maybe even more, <clears throat> from all of the tools that I was able to rescue here. This sulfamic acid. And you know how it starts with the word sulfur almost. So yeah, you know, sometimes it has a little bit of a rusty, sort of a sulfur smell. And you could, if you walk like right, put your nose like right near the, the bucket as it's uh, doing its little, uh, sprite carbonation thing there you can sort of smell the sulfur it kind of smells like rotten eggs a little bit and you can sort of smell the metal like it's being dissolved and off-gassed look, look how easily that comes off though just amazing those tools ready to be rinsed. Okay, so I've gotten most of the rest of my tools out now and I've dried them off. I've rinsed them and dried them off and thank God at least I got my two half inch ones back because these trowels I got I need to start a, a tile job that I'm doing at a, a friend's house in a few days. We're going to we have to uh, renovate their bathroom because it had a water leak but so look at the difference between these two here so the ruby one here what ruby does with their trowels is they put some kind of a coating on it that's kind of shiny and glossy and this other one here from Marshalltown as you can see did not fare quite as well it got all black and sort of rustyish I'm hoping the rust goes away uh, we'll wipe it down again but I think under use it'll probably be okay once the tool stays dry, I don't think it will get any worse than that. But the ruby one really held up. I have to do a little bit more scraping to get just some of those extra little chunks off there. But he held up nicely. And uh, the gold blatt float here, the grout float, he did nice. But you can see here, anything that was like real stainless steel, like, like this is actually a taping knife. I use taping knives a lot for just rapidly smoothing out. Um, the tile mortar but this one fared pretty well it didn't like turn black as the other metal did and even though this taping knife here at one point was a um, that looked stainless steel but I guess it really wasn't it was more or less an alloy of sorts and so that changed color but overall I'd say this was a success and then down here in the bucket a couple of hours ago I finally put in the paddle mixer there from my ruby mixer and you can see the acid has done a pretty good job already because it's already made that stuff way thinner and removed quite a bit of it so I can't get the whole thing to fit in there so what I'm doing here is I'm just coming in here and I rotate it like this every hour or so just to keep the concrete on there wet enough so that once I can get the, all that chiseled off then I can untwist this rod because this is two pieces and once I get that untwisted, then I can stick the rod in the bath there and get him going too. And here you can see both the torpedoes came out pretty good. Looking good. Okay, now here's something interesting. So here we are about two weeks later now. And we've had this bucket of mixture sitting here for the last probably three weeks now. And as you can see, it's still operational because look I had this thing was just completely covered with mortar here just a few days ago I stuck this in actually a couple of days ago and then we'll just let it sit this whole connection where this part of my ruby mixing paddle screws onto the other part this was just it was completely totally entombed like it was a, a wrapped mummy okay and it just did its job there it got rid of all of that stuff so yeah, the sulfamic acid is pretty good. I mean, I was almost ready to buy a new paddle because this thing was so clumped up with mortar because we forgot to wash it off one time. And then we were working at another site where we didn't have access to water at all. Zero. And couldn't. we just had enough to um, mix the mortar but didn't have enough to rinse off the tool. So 
this is a lifesaver. So here we have our last holdout. I had to leave one of them in there that had it on real extra thick. So he's going to sit in there another night. We'll see if another night in prison there will make him conform. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you found this video useful, we would appreciate if you give us a thumbs up down below. Right down here. Just give it a thumbs up there. And then if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below as well. And then click the bell icon next to that. And what that does is that keeps you alerted every time we upload a new video. Because believe me, folks, you do not want to miss a video. We're always uploading the best videos on home renovations, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, repairs, and all sorts of other engineering disasters that happen around your home. So that's it for this one, and we'll see you on the next one.